So this is a 3D printed uh, rakeless roja that I've made. Uh, it's not completely set up yet. I, you see I don't have a bushing on it. And I do not have the axle in there. If you take a look at the normal raw base plate, you can see what I've done is um, to make it rakeless, all you do is you take the axle and you move it down in line with the pivot axis. And on a, a bolt pivot truck, the pivot axis is the bolt, which is different than on a kingpin truck. Um, so you have to move it down in line with this bolt and they intersect each other. And that obviously won't work if you want to still have a through axle. So um, bolt pivot trucks need to have split axles in order for them to work. And that's why you see them uh, rakeless much less often. So the distance between uh, the center of this and the center of the axle, that's the axle offset and that's the measurement of how much rake it has. So if we take a look at them side by side, you can see just how much lower the axle is on this rakeless design and as is uh, that's going to reduce the clearance by quite a lot in fact if I remove this you can see whereas before look at see the, the axle is just the center of the axle is just a few millimeters from the highest point now the center of the axle is quite a bit farther in from the farthest point. So the clearance is is quite a lot less. And that is another reason why you don't very often see rakeless uh, bolt pivot trucks. So there is ways to get around that because the axle only has to be in line with the bolt which is going in this direction here. Let's see, let me grab a, uh, a visual aid. So the bolt, the bolt pivot is like that so you can have the axle anywhere along that line, including continuing up out the top like that. So what you can do to get more clearance back is instead of having a hanger being straight across like this, you can have it come, make room for this uh, bushing seat or bearing seat, and then it can jog up and out. And you can have a taller truck with a kind of jogged, hanger which is even harder to make so anyway it becomes very very difficult to to make uh, the rakeless bolt pivot trucks in addition to having more clearance moving the axle out further along the pivot also makes the trucks taller and it makes the wheelbase shorter because it's going to move it up here so it's going to move farther out that way and farther up that way and you know the thing you don't want is for your axle to move too far from the middle between the two bolts um, otherwise it doesn't work as happily with uh, deck designs which are basically designed to have the wheel at a certain point relative to these two bolt holes so it gets it gets messy so um, so yeah, so that would be why you don't see uh, rakeless, uh, rakeless bolt pivot trucks very much. But I've decided to make these and see what they feel like and try them out. So this is the first version of the hanger I made. And it's basically identical to the one I've got on there except for it's got, it's missing something very important and that is, uh, it's missing a hole for the, for the axle on the other side. Uh, I messed up when uh, when making the model, and I I forgot to mirror the hole. Um, but basically, you can see for the bearing surface um, on this side, it's not very clean or smooth, and that really doesn't matter because I'm registering the bearings on this inner, uh, you know, the inner cylinder of this hole on both sides. That's a real snug fit. And if the bottom is not quite completely snug and flat, that's not a problem. It's just gonna it's gonna sit down until it it uh, it seats, and uh, but it's registering mostly on the sides.
there you go. Look at that. Now those are fixed in there really good, and it's basically they're belted in. So, yeah. See if this works. Battery's dying. That's that. The uh, because it's plastic, it melts to the threads, and as soon as I let it cool down, it should be set, and it should be like an entire thing of nylock. All right, so now to put it together, um, <coughs> what we need is put the uh, bearing in. So it's got two things and the other side. Put the bushing on. Just in there. Goes like that. Then we have this side that and this and that all right that feels really good so now I need to just put the wheels on there and we can go out and try it out so there's the uh, there's the truck all set up and ready to go. I've even got it on a uh, extra riser so that it's running the same height as the rear. The last thing I want to do is I want to switch out this custom uh, 32 degree base plate for this stock 45, and that way uh, I can uh, try the rakeless on both the front and the rear without it being different angles, and I can. I can get a better feel for what it's doing. So, there we go. And we're ready to ride, and I'm sure the question on your mind is, is this rideable? And yes, it will be rideable, but I don't expect it to last particularly long. I'm not gonna trust it for, I wouldn't trust it for sliding, or if, if it hits anything, it's gonna just snap. Um, and in fact, I even got a softer bushing on it so that there's less stress on it from the bushings. The bolt comes in the hanger to about here, and so there's a huge risk that it can snap right there and right there. If I was to have a through axle, just have an axle all the way through, it could probably be just about bulletproof, but um, as said before, you can't do that with a rakeless uh, bolt pivot truck. So we're going to have to make do with this. All right, so if we stand on the front, obviously it leans a lot because the bushing is so soft. But it feels quite linear. And if you swap it around, feel the rear. Yeah, it definitely has, you can definitely feel it. I mean, you, you probably know what rake feels like. Um, but yeah, it feels a little tighter at the top. Right, yeah, so it feels a little tighter at the top from like this to here to here. And then past that, it kind of has, that's where the divey feel comes into play. So I can feel that diveyness quite definitely but it's not as big of a difference as I would have thought side by side um, I'm guessing it might be a bigger difference if the bushings were the same hardness uh, but I don't have two of these soft bushings so now time to ride now I got footage of me stepping on it and it hasn't broken right on
So now I'm gonna try that way. Uh, see how this feels. Yeah, it's got that, it's got that playful rake feel to it. Okay, let's see how it handles bumps. Woo. All right, so there's no obvious signs of distress or damage or eminent failure or anything like that, so that's all good. It's very reassuring to know that I probably didn't just almost kill myself, which is nice. Some impressions are that, let's see, so despite the fact that this bushing is so much harder and stiffer than this red one, the rake truck still felt very, very lively. It felt very good. Um, and in fact, um, so this one, this one felt lively just for the sake that it was a very loose truck. Um, but this one felt lively for a different reason. So it was a different flavor of liveliness. And in fact, some ways, the rake truck felt even more lively than this very loose front. For instance, when I was doing a little bit of pumping, the uh, rake truck definitely gave back just a little bit more uh, into the pump than the rakeless truck, which makes sense. That's normally how you set up pumping setups. So, um, basically, it feels like a raked truck versus a rakeless truck. It still feels very good, very precise. It, it feels like a Roja still, um, only it feels rakeless. So I definitely think it's viable um, as, as a concept and as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a ride. It works. Um, it's not lively, but, I mean, that's what brakeless trucks are. They're just more linear, they're more neutral. So that's just how it is. Um, si since I was restricted in 3D printing out of plastic, I had to overbuild my hanger quite a bit. And um, that contributed to some of the clearance issues or clearance restrictions that this truck had. But you look at the size of that gap and compare it to the size of the gap on this truck, you can see with the metal uh, bearing seat, you can get rid, you can get away with much uh, uh, tighter clearances and much tighter spaces, uh, and I think you'd have better ground clearance because of that. So, I think you could probably get away with um, not having to do, mess with a whole lot in order to maintain good ground clearance. I might probably still want to move the axle out a little bit so instead of it being instead of it being directly in line between the top and the bottom uh, bearings well actually this is this is offset a little bit too you can see see how it's flat on this side and it comes down you know on this side so the center of the bearing seat is here and the center of the axle is a few millimeters above that but I think if you're going to move it a quarter of an inch higher up, so the center of the axle was right here, um, I think that would be kind of 
pretty ideal. It'd be more difficult and a little bit more expensive to do that, but um, I think that would be a pretty good geometry, give you all the clearance. Um, it would still, doing that would still be lower profile, uh, just a lower truck than the regular Raha, which I think would be good. I think that one of the Raha's overall drawbacks is just they're, so, they're such tall trucks. And this would bring it more in line with normal trucks and, uh, and it'd be rakeless. Anyway, I, I think it's a viable concept, a viable product. Um, and it might be a little bit more expensive than the normal hanger, but um, it should be doable. Anyway, so those are my opinions and impressions after riding this rakeless Rojas I made. Uh, longboard technology, over and out.